All right. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for introducing. Um, uh, to speak a bit further about me, yeah, I'm working with Pillar since 2007, 16 years now, basically in international sales to start with. And I was always working for the uh, MVR business in that range. And the latest or the last years, I was the product manager for our VapoFan, the smallest solution for steam compression. I will get to that in a minute. And so, yeah, and now I'm here in Australia for the newly funded subsidiary here in Brisbane. And to shortly introduce our company, for those who don't know Pillar, Pillar was funded 1909 by Mr. Anton Pillar. And we are basically located directly in the center of Germany, what you can see here. Nowadays, we have more than 500 employees working globally. Here you can see where we are located in the world. And as mentioned, the latest or the newest funded subsidiary that is here with me in Brisbane. But now getting back to the MVR um, um, discussion, um, we heard a lot how that works. So I, there's no need to, to inform much about this slide. Basically, always when there's vapor coming from process or when there's waste heat that can be recovered and uh, compressed to higher temperatures with our blowers and then be reused as an energy resource. And we had that. So there are lots of systems where these kind of applications are used like evaporation as the major example, but also crystallization distillations. And yes, we have used um, or we were involved in projects with drying systems. And now how do we fit in with our portfolio in the MVR technology? I just want to give you a quick glance of the product portfolio, what we have there, and that is our pillar vapor line. You can see on the left-hand side, that is our vapor flex. The vapor flex is the well-established um, MVR compression blower since the beginning of the 1980s, we are producing this uh, product range. In the center here, you can see our latest development that is the Vapor Max. Here we combined technology from blowers and we used also elements from compressors to achieve a very high compression ratio. And on the right hand side, that is the pillar vapor fan our smallest solution for steam compression. And you can see already the small footprint, what we are able to achieve with the vertical alignment. And yeah, well, as I said, this is the uh, solution for very low mass flows. When we speak about our blowers, we can highlight them in five different major um, topics. It is very flexible, especially with our vapor flex and uh, many impeller solutions we have to design for um, all sorts of process conditions. So it's flexible and very cost effective. We have with the blower design a very compact and robust design. I will get to that in more details in a second. And also when it comes to maintenance costs, maintenance costs I will speak about that in a, in a minute as well. They are extremely low. We are able with that blower design to achieve very high efficiencies. And also we've seen that before, um, it is possible to align them in multi-stage without any doubt. When it comes to references and experience, um, I didn't bring too much uh, case studies directly, but there are various. We've seen some, we are involved in similar processes and in in really in gazillion applications where we see where these uh, kind of technology can be used. With the 40 years we are in that business now, we have more than 5,000 5, installations of our blowers meanwhile. Here I wanna show you the performance range we are able to cover with our vapor line. On the left-hand side with the purple area, you can see what the vapor fan is capable of. These conditions, what you see here, they are in ambient. So at 100 degrees C, saturated steam. So uh, not to mix up on that axis, this is logarithmic. So this is not linear. 
um, not to confuse you. So the vapor fan itself is for very low flows up to five tons per hour in ambient conditions. The vapor flex, that is as the name says, and as I said before, very flexible, and we can achieve a mass flow up to 250 tons per hour easily, and that's still with very high delta Ts. Speaking of high delta Ts, now it comes to our vapor max. And here you can see in single stage, we have a higher compression ratio, and we are able to achieve an ambient conditions up to 18 Kelvin yearly. Now, apart from MVR, how can, how can that also be used? Nowadays, speaking, and what we heard already, um, of reducing energy and CO2 output, retrofitting units, that is a very good solution to use the, um, the overhead vapor coming out with heat pump systems and MVR technology to regain that uh, energy. What you see here is a Sankey diagram. And on the left-hand side, without that heat pump system, you can see how much fossil fuel resources need to be input or need to be used to heat up steam, which is then used for the process, but also in a big amount um, vapors out as just plain waste. And this is wasted energy at the end. So if you decide to install a heat pump system Whatever the vapor outcome is, of course, that needs to be uh, evaluated precisely. It can either, either be um, recompressed directly or you flash it with an evaporation system. The steam coming out of that at low temperatures will then be recompressed to a higher temperature and then reused in a system as energy or as heat source. And you can see the input of fossil resources and electricity is way lower and the output of waste heat, that is of course way lower. Meanwhile, over the past decade, we have more than 35 of such uh, um, installations where we were involved and they vary from all sorts. We talked about sugar already, but also in petrochemical industry and even in beverage, alcohol, food industry, name them everywhere. It's very popular at the moment. But now uh, I wanna talk a bit about the advantages, what we have with that blower design, and also when it comes to such installations. Speaking about installation, what you see here on the right-hand side in that picture is that we have a multi-stage alignment. Here in that case, it's, let's say, only eight stages in series, but they are, installed very close next to each other. And the big advantage is that we are able to install our blowers on elevated platforms. And that is very interesting when it comes to um, uh, low space and space requirements on sites, which is usually fairly difficult for existing plants. So as I said, what you can see is eight blowers in serial on a rooftop of a platform. And not only that, when you sneak through the grid of that level or of that elevation here, you can see that we have the same eight stage alignment, just one level lower. Means on that platform, we have two lines of eight blowers in series, 16 blowers operating on the same platform without any problem. And this actually, this is a very good case study of that project here, what we have with a high amount of energy savings. What helps us doing that is the wide performance range of every single blower what we have. You can see that on that short sample here. Every blower has its best operating area, what you can see here in the golden center to make that short. But apart from that, you can see when it comes to mass flow, we are able to vary. And that is very good when it comes to turn down cases or different batches or whatever. Um, we are able to fulfill that with the wide operating range, what we have. And also always when we are close to that optimum area, we are able to achieve the very high efficiencies. Another advantage is with the blower design, um, it's shown on the two graphics, what you see here. 
This is a cut through the blower inlet and the casing internals where you can see our impeller inside. And we've heard already that it is uh, always an advantage to desaturate up front in front of our blower. That means the recooling with water injection. The recooling with water injection will not look exactly like that shown here. Usually it evaporates uh, quite quite significantly or quite quite immediately, and it looks like a like a fog actually or a mist. But Showing that as it looks like droplets, that shows also how resistant a blower design like that is to entrainments. We can deal with uh, droplets for a size up to one millimeter without any problem. And also when it comes to entrainments, the water injection of course helps flushing that through and the blower design itself doesn't have too much problems. And I'm not sure if you're able to see my cursor. Um, on the left picture, you can see the big gap what we have in between rotating equipment like our impeller, impeller and the static equipment of the fan casing and the fan inlet. The distance what we have on that side, the closest gap is millimeters. And that really assures that there will be no problem of touching surfaces through operation at all. And now last but not least, I wanna talk a bit about the maintenance requirements. Maintenance requirements for blowers, they are extremely low. You can see that here, usually it's always advisable to monitor all the conditions and to use the instrumentation supplied. But apart from that, on a weekly and annual basis, there's minor components which need to be replaced. And that can be done without stopping the operation even. So it's only oil uh, filters or grease cartridges, filters for the, for the drive uh, cabinets, et cetera. And then the, uh, the first bigger maintenance which needs to be done is after three years only. And that's basically the carbon searings for the shaft seal. That can be done fairly simple and usually it doesn't lead to long downtimes on site. First downtimes or bigger downtimes then would be after six years approximately um, for replacing the bearings, what we have on the motors, gearboxes, and, and our blower, of course. Yeah, well, that's actually about the advantages and the pillar product range for the MVR business. Thanks for that, Jan. So it, clearly there's a, we're talking a lot less uh, uh, maintenance here compared to a, uh, say, a screw compressor, centrifugal compressor, that sort of thing. This is a, uh, I guess that's a lot of peace of mind for people knowing they're not going to have big maintenance bills with this sort of equipment. That's good. Um, Jan, thanks very much for that presentation. If there's any questions for Jan and the team, please uh, pop them in the in the uh, Q and A box. Uh, we've got our first question here. This one uh, will we no doubt be for uh, for Jan or Juha. Uh, is surge a problem with multi-stage systems and separate motors? Surge, I, I assume that's a surge of the process. Uh, when it, that, that's unstable, not an electrical surge. Yeah, no, actually it is not much different as for single stages. Of course, it is to be monitored um, um, uh, more precisely. And it is always need to be assured that we have the variation in, in driving all the blowers are aligned. That means from their maximum um, possible speed down to the lowest speed in the same ratio. That needs to be assured. But apart from that, there's no, it's not really critical. It's advisable to uh, use mon special monitoring systems for that, of course, but uh, really search is not that much a problem as for compressors.